Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you're doing great. It's a hot day today. It's cooled down a little bit, but it is quite miserable. But alhamdulillah, I have some nice harissa spiced chicken in the oven, and I'm excited to eat it. So there's that to look forward to. So, on that topic of food, <laughs> I want to talk to you essentially today about weight. Liberals have now started a movement called the Fat Acceptance Movement. As we know, liberals, the leftists, they want to normalize everything absurd. Okay? Everybody's a victim, and everybody's oppressed, and everyone wants to have something to whine about and become a fake activist about. And one of those is that intentional weight loss is fatphobic, and you can still be healthy when you are clearly overweight, which we know for now the scientific data on that isn't true, but you never know if doctors go woke for money. That's the problem of the medical sector, is that it is not above corruption at times. And so I want to tell you something. If you are letting yourself go you're weaker in the mind and you're not really physically fit to help fight against shaitan. What do I mean by that? If you are overweight, you're hating yourself. You're not loving yourself. Not saying you have to be a supermodel, but I am saying that exercise, strength helps in times of emergencies and protecting your children and that being overweight is a sign of gluttony and a sign of slothness, laziness, and hatred of the body, and ingratitude towards your own self, not appreciating the abilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. Losing weight is an act of defiance against shaitan. It will also, be honest, will make your spouse more attracted to you. Sure, there's fat fetishes. Sure, yeah. Maybe some dudes like uh, busty, thick women. There's a difference between thick and out of shape. And you have a gut. Or you just have a little tiny pudge. That's different, right? You don't need to have a six pack. Some people like that. But you should try to not get above a size seven. If you start getting to an eight and a nine, to a 10, I would say you're pushing it and you need to have more discipline. Now I know there's a lot of excuses of your medication, of your big bone, it's genetics. It really comes down to you making healthier choices. And if you're gonna eat really calorie rich food, just burn it off, you know? Just burn it off, let it turn into fuel. But if you're going to have a sedentary lifestyle, truly you have to manage that and eat really healthy meat and good quality fish and organic vegetables and work out as best you can. Whether it's a simple walk, stretching, there's all kinds of fun things you can do for yourself that, with, that are within your capacity in the privacy of your own home or you build your own gym or you go to all female gym. You go hiking, you use something. But the more you work out, the stronger you get, the more you reduce your stress, and the more you become connected to yourself and confident in your sexuality. And keeping yourself ready for whenever you want to have an adorable baby. And once the baby's out, working on losing that weight and then, you know, returning to your normal sex life with your partner. To be attractive in your body shape helps your spouse to not lurk for others. I understand, I understand. Even if you have a nice body, dudes will cheat. I totally understand. But if you're becoming out of shape while your man is in shape and you're not, it's not because you're pregnant or you had an injury or you're not ill, 
this is something quite difficult. Now, if you're both out of shape, sometimes you can lead by example, get in shape, and then he can try it too because he'll start to be like, hey, what are you doing? You're going to go work out? You're going to make yourself a protein shake? It was smoothie, whatever. And you're like, yeah, you know, you can do things together as a couple to inspire one another. But I highly encourage you to be weary of the fat acceptance movement because it encourages you to have this mental illness and neglect of yourself. It teaches you to indulge in yourself, to not perfect yourself, and to deny reality, and to become sloth-like, unhealthy, and slow. And if someone wants to abuse you, and you can't even walk up the stairs without whinging, there's a problem. If there's a natural disaster and you need to get out of the building, but you're too slow, that's a problem. If you need to do self-defense against a criminal, but you're too big and you lose, that's a problem. Sure, there's sumo wrestlers, whatever, but at the end of the day, being physically fit as a woman is a net bonus. And there's only wonders that come from it. I'm not saying you have to be obsessed, right? But what I am saying is that you have to take the basic steps. And everyone likes their own body type. But if you're having a lack of confidence in your nudity, the solution isn't to let your gut hang out and just let it all hang out. Nor is the solution plastic surgery until you turn into a plastic Barbie. Rather, it's keeping yourself in shape, going on a hike, and having you know a good body for your spouse. And your man will appreciate this. And I know you might be saying, well, it's hard to do. You get your prayers, you got to cook, you have all your chores, you got to study. But it does help you. And there's so many ways for you to squeeze some time in. And to involve your children in it. It's good for you. Whether you like running early in the morning. Whether you have a treadmill in your garage. Or a treadmill in your backyard. Or you do lunges around something. Or you even have your own pool in your backyard. You can do laps constantly. Water aerobics. I mean, the the options for you, for your specific context, are out there. And doing at least an hour a day. Working up to two hours. You know, at least two hours a week. That is better than nothing. And so... Be very weary of these mentally ill people who have decided that being morbidly obese is a sort of wonderful thing. And when you start to see these obese people on fashion magazines being heavily promoted, know that it's not for your best interest and that you probably don't have the health insurance to cover the cost of all that unhealthiness. I'm not saying you're mean to fat people or you hate yourself. What I'm saying is to strive towards physical excellence is beautiful. When you work out, just think that you're appreciating the the body that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. And every time you copulate with your man, you will feel more comfortable if the lights are on and not just off. Whether it's day or night. Whether you put the blankets on top or not. This is important for your psychology as a woman. Because if you start to be proud of your unimpressive body. This isn't confidence. Rather this is delusion. And it's unfair to the, to your man. It's unfair. And like I said. If he's out of shape. You starting can prompt him to do it. And again. If you decide to let your body go, chances are he's going to watch videos of more slender women and then kind of wish he had that and he doesn't have the heart to tell you to lose weight. Okay, when you're pregnant, you can go up three sizes. Your man is understanding. He knows you're growing. Whatever you got to do to grow that little cute baby, you do it. After the baby is out and you're rested, you're no longer bleeding... The child is, you know, three months old, four months old. Boom. You know, you're healed completely. Everything's good, mashallah. Dig into those routine. Baby's on a nap schedule. 
Get it in. Get it in. Trust me, you'll save yourself a lot of weird emotions if you just take care of yourself. And there's so many ways to do it. I love eating donuts, just you gotta work out more if you do that, right? You don't have to eat like a rabbit. You just gotta make sure you, you work it out, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But be careful, I say, of these people who are encouraging women to stay fat because this will hurt marriages. So many men complain. Oh, when we were we were together dating and when we were first married, she had the beautiful body. Then she got lazy and plumped up and now it's like having this fat pig at home. Men say these kind of things to each other. And it's like, wow. That's kind of sad that you like a woman and then she plumps up. I wouldn't tolerate that. You know, it would a few women who are in shape or just have a regular body would want a morbidly obese spouse who when they married he was had a nice biceps, nice triceps, quadriceps were on point, calves, you know, squared, and then he completely lets go of himself and turns into Kung Fu Panda. And having intimacy with someone like that can be can be quite difficult. Now there's sweetheart chubby men who are complete sweethearts, you know, and very kind. Right? But the point is is that just because there are chubby people and then there's obese people who have a spouse and then there's now the fat acceptance movement, doesn't mean you therefore then indulge and let yourself go. Doesn't mean you turn into a psycho either and you're standing on the scale every day and you're getting body dysmorphia and you're like, oh, I'm going to turn anorexic. That's not what I'm saying. Not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying be conscious of your pant size. You know, don't be afraid to say, I need to do a run. And don't be afraid to have your little cake. Mashallah, don't be afraid. A little bit of nice carbonara pasta, a little bit of pizza margarita, okay? Just got to do some extra workout to burn that off, right? Just saying, the fat acceptance movement is another leftist movement that is sick. Just like they want to destigmatize drug use, which is horrible for people, now they're encouraging you to be overweight, which will damage marriage, will run your bank account dry through all the health problems, and you'll become more depressed because you will not be, you'll be denying the reality of the mirror. Not telling you to be a narcissist or egotist or vain. Rather, just be conscious. Just be conscious. And your body has a right over you to want to be healthy and have strength, man. If there's a criminal woman, you want to be able to, you know, handle that business. If you're being assaulted by a man, you want to have a fighting chance to, to get him off of you. And if you're out of shape and out of order in your body weight, it's a lot harder. A lot harder to run away. Sometimes the best thing you can do when you're getting jumped or someone's trying to hurt you is to run instead of standing your ground because there might be more of them than there is you. And you gotta, whoo, you gotta go like a cheetah. If you're out of weight, you can't do that. And sure, you might be able to sit on them, but someone can clock you in the head and then the giant is on the ground. So, be cautious, young ones, of social media trends such as that movement. It is actually gaining ground. I've looked into it, I've researched it. I find it a very depraved, very, very weird group that makes me sick. And I just want to bring it to your attention so that if you see your wife going down this route or your sister or you as a woman yourself find your inner being going towards that route, you can check yourself and think about how Shaitan wants you to be fat, sick, weak, docile, dumb, unhealthy, and just a gluttonous jello bag. Whereas, 
if you're trying to stay healthy and fit and you're praying and you're doing your job and you're conscious of what you cook and where you go and what you do and you set a good example for your health that adds a lot more benefit not only to yourself but to society so I hope you understand where I'm coming from and may Allah make it easy for everyone to find time to work out and manage their weight.